No, it's not. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our first meeting of the Public Art Commission for 2014, and uh, our first meeting in two months. Um, also a new venue for us in here in the conference room. So some of us who've been around here um, for a number of years and have been in here longer than we were in the chambers and liked this intimate setting around the table. So um, welcome. I will start with roll call tonight. Um, Commissioner Ross. Present. Commissioner Kavanaugh. Here. Commissioner Miyagi. Here. Commissioner Collins. Here. Commissioner Toback. Present. And Commissioner Richter. Here. We have a full group tonight. Um, we are also joined by staff members Elise DeMarzo and Nadia. Last name? Jabrina. Um, so we'll start with any agenda changes tonight, requests or deletions? No, none from you? Um, great. I welcome oral communications from anyone from the public who would like to address the commission on an item not on the agenda tonight. Okay. And we're going to move into uh, a review and approval of the minutes of November 21st from two months ago. You guys have those in front of you. Does anyone have any comment? Okay, if there are no comments, um, I move to approve the minutes of November 21st. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 They're unanimous. Okay, moving on to the financial report, I'll hand it over to Elise. Okay, so on the CHP budget in front of you, there were just uh, a couple of payments that were processed since we met in November. Uh, Mike Sabo for the California Avenue of Fountain, he is uh, in fabrication at this point, so his next payment went out in the amount of $15,000. And then uh, the Aurora, Aurora funds that were allocated by the commission in the amount of $1,200 were paid out. And those are the only changes to the CIP funds, which when you also subtract out approved future projects, leaves an available budget of a little over $33,000. Are there any questions on the CIP? Not a question, but um, does that mean that Samuel Yates is finally, that project is closed? Uh, Samuel Yates' uh, check has been uh, cut. He has not signed the final paperwork and collected the check. It has been cut and it is held with the attorney, so. Oh, I do have um, one edit. It's something that remained in here from last time, but I know this past month we had um, clarified um, as we had intended to on the City Hall project. So it mm -hmm. still has in there a notation of a future allocation. Mm -hmm. So we would need to pull that. Which one is that? Um, so multimedia art, artwork for City Hall Lobby. The 25000 We approved 25000 but we um, had said that if there was additional funds to come forth to the commission, uh, we didn't pre-approve anything for next year. Right, so that's the reason it's set aside and not coming out of the CIP funds, is that it's just a notation that that will, that will come back in the next fiscal year. So that is that subtracted out of the CIP. So it's talking about this, this 25000 that we voted on. Right. 
but not, not in the other. That's just a side note to remind people that that is floating out there and will come back in the next fiscal year. I think it's misleading because it says it's to be allocated and there ha there was no um, a motion to allocate anything. Okay. So we, unless it's referring to that 25000 right. I think, yeah. Right? It's just There's, the 125 it's, Yeah. It's only the $125,000 that has been allocated, but there was discussion that we may circle back in the next fiscal year to allocate an additional twenty five. Right, but because, but it's, to say it's to be allocated is, it hasn't, it has to actually come forth and be moved right. and voted and so forth. So right. it shouldn't be reflected on the budget as being, having been allocated. Or even intended to be allocated. It's for discussion next mm -hmm. year with okay. where the project is, what the commission decides. Um, any other questions or comments on the CIP portion? I think so. The the stipends for the artists that ended up dropping out of University Avenue Tunnel because we mm -hmm. had allocated money Good for point. five. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that would just, just go back in. That so just goes back. Right. right. Okay. Because yeah. the CIP funds roll over. Mm -hmm. So it would just show that you expended for three of those artists, right. but the remaining amount just goes back yeah. in the CIP. Okay. And so on the maintenance funds, uh, we'll have much more coming to you next month as we gear up on our, our maintenance this year because uh, those are funds that. Um, disappear at the end of the fiscal year and so we are focusing on that now that we've got the percent for art moving um, the only update on there is the uh, the next payment for the engraved bricks in 2200 so that's the only change from the last budget amount so that leaves a remaining balance of twenty thousand seven hundred dollars in the maintenance budget another question Yes. <clears throat> Digital DNA maintenance, is that mm -hmm. uh, going to happen this year? And what was the final status on that? I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. It, yeah, it, it took place. It's done already? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that's about it over there. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you start looking at Oh, it is. I'm sorry. It's much <laughs> 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 My fault. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Any other questions on the maintenance budget or general? Fiscal update? No? Okay. Sorry, um, I had just one. Oh, go ahead. <clears throat> just on the appraisal, I saw that as kind of a new, um, I guess, item in the, mm -hmm. in the activities. And so I was just curious, is this something that's ever been done before, or will this be the first time? And no, it's an update? It, it has been appraised before, but it's been some time. And, um, and so that is something that we're talking about doing, is getting an accurate uh, valuation on on the collection so that would also clearly come with a cost so sure um, we're not certain if we'll complete that by the end of this fiscal year or if that's something that rolls to the next but I put it down there on the pending projects because it is something that we would like to undertake in the next year and then once an appraisal is completed mm -hmm. then do we actually have insurance at the city level and then does that get bumped relative to whatever the it helps us with the for? insurance issue certainly yes okay. And then is that an item, for example, that the commission would be involved in, or is that primarily a staff-related uh, expenditure? Um, maintenance typically is kind of a staff. Right. right? So generally, if it's, if it's under $3,000, it's something that can be just done on a staff level. Something mm -hmm. that's over the $3,000 mark, generally staff yep. comes to the commission in advance unless there's some sort of emergency. And you would expect the appraisal to be under $3,000? I, you know, we really we don't know because yeah. if we're appraising yeah, such a large collection, right. how much of it can be done digitally based on the records we have, and how much of it needs to have a physical examination? Um, and with the number of objects in the collection, that could be a big number. Yeah, I would think it would probably be mm -hmm. in excess of three thousand. But there yes, you go. Okay. Uh, a quick related question, uh, Kathleen. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, with the the collection appraisal, then whether it's for a portion or all of the collection, mm -hmm. have numbers based on specific pieces so that when that would go in the database so that when we're looking at um, whether you know what decisions are to be made about a piece including maintenance and so forth that then so that it would factor into each individual piece as well as the overall 
Absolutely. It's um, when you're looking at an artwork, especially if something is going to require a significant amount of funds to restore, right. something you want to look at is you know what is How the value worth. of the thing before yeah. you continue to pour money into it. We've definitely had that come up before. And then, like in an ideal world, how often? would the collection get appraised? Like say if it were done as a whole each time, like how every like four years, mm -hmm. 10 years, like what, in a, what do you think would? I'm just curious, you know, I'm uh, curious like in an ideal. ideal for a city collection, yeah. it, would be, it would be really challenging to say. I believe the last time it was appraised was sometime in the 80s, uh -huh. so. Mm -hmm. We're due. <laughs> yeah, well, but I wouldn't no, think no, it would be cut every it. five or 10 years. It seems to me that it would be too yeah. often by right. 25. It would be no, and like you would be adding years, as new pieces like come into the collection, you would have the new value of pieces. Right. But yeah. yeah. Um, okay. If there are no more questions about budget um, and our financial report, we will move on to staff comments. Fantastic. <coughs> so, happy new year to everyone. Um, so I have just a few uh, comments for anyone who may be listening in and interested um, that are not on the agenda. So the donation of the Nathan Oliveira sculpture, the paperwork is complete, so the piece officially is in the collection at this point. Um, and we, I believe we had staff meeting with the concrete contractor today on site, so hopefully we'll have some estimates uh, for you know, getting the piece actually installed and mounted at the art center. So we're very pleased with that, and we'll keep you posted on the timing for that, because I know the commission had talked about wanting to have a, a reception with the art center and the art center foundation to celebrate its triumphant return. The other item I wanted to bring up in the comments is that the Division of Arts and Science did submit an R-Town grant uh, last week with Theater Works as a primary partner to enliven the Coverly Community Center space as a temporary arts destination, providing an opportunity for more interaction between many of the stakeholders at Coverly, community members, and visitors. Several social practice artists have been approached with the possibility of doing projects there over a, a span of 18 months and have been very interested in it. So we will not learn if we're successful in the grant application until I believe it's late July. And so programming would begin until late that fall and would take place over about 18 months. So we're very excited about that possibility and what that could mean for having some really interesting, engaging public art mm -hmm. as one piece of that, that proposal. And then finally, um, this is an item on the agenda, but again, just to get it out there on the comments, the uh, Percent for Art, the um, Public Art and Private Development Ordinance uh, that passed last year is now in effect. So as of early January, uh, the ordinance is effective and we are starting to uh, meet with developers and all of the documents necessary and available are on the website for cityofcaloalto.org. Go to community services and public art and those documents are there and staff is working on you know, getting more documents for uh, to help flush out the information there that's available. But what we have is available there for anyone who may be listening and interested. And that's all I have for this morning. Great, thank you. Um, we're gonna move on to action items. And before I jump into our first action item, I wanted to share a couple comments, since this is my last uh, meeting tonight as your chair. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to say, as I reflected back on you know, what 2013 meant for this commission, and um, you know, I really think of it as a year that was paving the way for this public art in Palo Alto. Um, I see so many things that have, are in alignment now to really m move into momentous progress. And um, I want to thank all of you. It's been really great to, to work with you, both you know, newer commissioners as well as people who were sitting around this table with me nearly six years ago when we all joined and were new. And I really want to thank Amanda for vice chairing this commission with me because I feel like you know, without you doing that with me this year, um, it wouldn't have been the same. 
And um, you know, I, I think that moving our commission into a place that those of us who have been around for a while knew um, that it, you know, it was more um, organic before. You know, it's just been, and it, it's moving into being a more professional, um, formalized um, program, and you know, which is great. And it, but it also has a lot of growing pains along the way, and it's been taking a lot of, you know, just rolling the sleeves up and sitting down and looking at process and procedure and ordinance, which is definitely kind of not wasn't my initial draw to joining the commission. Um, and I've learned it's really essential in order to make things work and to to get, do, do great things with it. So um, I think it's exciting where we are and I think as I reflect back on you know that this past year we've acquired a number of really significant pieces to the collection between Bruce Beasley and the other three commissioned works in Mitchell Park. Um, you know between the recent Oliveira um, donation um, and then really significant being the percent for, for um, you know, for in private development of 1% for art. And it's, I, I believe, has been a couple of years um, work that's just come to fruition around that. I mean, I remember a few years ago sitting in this room with council and talking about this idea and showing them what kind of work is happening in other cities with this kind of percent. And I really think it, you know, the seeds have been planted for a while to do that. So um, that's exciting. And frankly, the launch, this year of, of there being a public art program with Rye coming on board, with Nadia joining the team so that with Elise there is a team now. Um, we were coming from a place before where for a while there was actually no one. Um, even we had a, you know, a temporary person who was sort of not really even working for public art before Elise stepped in. So it's really, when I think about where it's come, just in a really short period of time, I think it's really something and it's it's everyone that has really been making that happen so with that when I think about what I'd love for the next chair and vice chair to kind of um, spearhead and, and continue this great momentum on I think this this next step of really reaching out to the public and you know seeing that master art plan through will really allow you know our, our whole arts um, positioning to flourish and for us to really all be moving in the same direction. Um, I think that's a, that's a huge piece. And I think continuing to formalize the processes and really figuring out you know, how things happen and who does what and what, do, what does a commissioner really do anyway? What, is, what are the roles of the program as it's unfolding? And so that's just a continuing piece of work and I think it's all moving in a good way. So um, with that, I'm going to open up now <laughs> to um, nominations for these people who are going to uh, lead us through in this next year. I'd like to nominate for chair Kathleen Kavanaugh. And do you, um, you want to say anything about not, you're nominating her? Well, um, yeah, I, uh, I think that in just piggybacking on what Larissa said and um, and seeing Kathleen and having worked with her on the commission, I think that it requires a temperament that's quite um, strong, but also experienced, and um, somebody that's willing to take in viewpoints, but also be steadfast about her viewpoint, and um, I think she'd be a fantastic chair for the commission. Thank you, and I think if I have the protocol correct, then I need to accept the nomination, which I would do. So thank you, Amanda, and I accept your nomination. Okay, do we uh, have any other nominations for, uh, for chair? Okay, well, we um, need our ballot, paper ballots. If there's only, a, you may choose to do paper ballots if you like, but if there's only one person, um, generally it can be done orally, but it's up to the chair's discretion. I am happy to do it orally, if that suits everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so all in favor of voting for Kathleen Kavanaugh to be our next chair of the commission, show of hands. <laughs> I'm glad you got, I'm glad you I'm glad you voted for yourself. Congratulations. Congratulations. Chair Congratulations. Kavanaugh. 
Thank you, and I also think that um, I get to defer to the current chair to conduct the rest of the meeting. Right. So the previous, the I've previous so, chair. Um, <laughs> I think I would. Um, I'm not sure I'd have a chance later, but I thought about this um, back in November. So can I just take two seconds to say what I think are some of the um, <coughs> legacies that Larissa has left behind? Um, and that, I, I mean, she certainly has been around longer than I have, um, but I know in my short time on the commission, I know she has endeavored to see the website uh, brought um, sort of, sort of up to date, um, mm -hmm. cancel the old, bring in the new. Mm -hmm. um, she has worked on identity, which I think was probably one of her first challenges um, as a marketing professional as she is. And um, mm -hmm. certainly the database, bringing that, the percent for art um, into private development from the mun municipal. So I would say that um, mm -hmm. Marissa probably single-handedly has taken us from toddler <laughs> to teens, if, <laughs> if uh, not beyond. So. Thank you very much for your leadership over these years, and we will miss you all and hope that we'll get to keep you and maybe some sort of advisory <coughs> capacity going forward, because we would surely not want to lose you beyond your term expiration in April. Thank you. I certainly can't claim single-handed, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I do appreciate the comment. I really do. So I'm going to open up now to nominations for Vice Chair, and um, I'm going to start with a nomination um, of Ben Miyagi. Um, I've had the privilege of recently um, serving with him and Amanda as part of our governance subcommittee just in this process of that getting launched. And through that work um, and through his experience as being a commissioner for the city of San Jose, um, I have really been able to see that Ben brings um, a knowledge base that is really a benefit to the commission and art program at this time and um, brings, as Amanda said, is so important, also a, a temperament that is um, very well suited to the position. And um, I look forward, um, if he so, is so inclined, um, for him to, to step into this type of role in our group. Uh, ben, do you accept I, the nomination? I, I accept the nomination. Thank you. No. I accept the nomination. Thank you. And uh, do we have any additional nominations for vice chair? No. Okay, we're back to voting right now. Um, all in favor of voting in Commissioner Miyagi as vice chair of our commission, please let's have a show of hands. Okay, we have a unanimous vote. Congratulations. It's great. Very exciting. And newbies take over. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, they are yeah. two of us. Get them while they're fresh and uh, mm -hmm. full of them. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Ready to take a Not beat down <laughs> yet. came on, there were five of us who were new at one time. We all came to the first new meeting, and wow. so the two who were remaining, who were the chair and vice chair, yeah. <laughs> with the five of us <laughs> That's true. I think they even needed us to officially elect them. <laughs> 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 the first meeting, we had to elect them. That's true. Yeah, here we'd never met them before. We barely probably knew the process for when do we say I, what are we doing? <laughs> it was really um, quite some time. Um, okay, let's circle back, get in the top of our meeting here. Um, okay, we're going to move on to action item number two, and um, which is about the University Avenue Tunnel. Uh, so the commissioners serving on that panel um, are Vicki Toback and Amanda Ross and myself. We met today. And I'm going to have at least initially introduce kind of the process and panel. And so you guys have the, the format of that. And then it will come back to us to share what happened today and what our recommendations are. Thank you. So the University Avenue Tunnel has been moving along steadily for several months now. 
Um, you'll recall in the spring that we launched an open call for qualifications uh, for artists. There were nearly 60 artists that responded to that. We had a pre-panel and then we had a selection panel that met over the summer that took a list of about 20 artists down to five finalists, which we asked to create site-specific proposals. So of those five artists, three of them did submit proposals in December, and so the panel did meet today. I do want to tell you that this was a really excellent panel. It was a fantastic panel. So we had John Stoddard from IDEO, Matthew Tews from Stanford, Joey Pizzioli, who's one of our artists, uh, Russ Cohen from the Downtown Business and Professional Association, and then our three commissioners, Vicki Toback, Larissa Usage, and Amanda Beard Ross. Uh, today we also had three technical advisors from the city come join us. Um, it's always a good idea, especially when you're in a space like the University Avenue Tunnels where um, we want to make sure that we're not approving something that's completely um, impossible to make happen. So they tried to keep us from going off the rails and uh, they were actually very encouraging. So um, we had three excellent proposals to look at and now I'll turn it over to Commissioner Toback to, uh, to embellish. Yeah. Yeah. Lewis and I are going to co-embellish <laughs> here. Um, yeah, it's here. So yeah, so it was, it was a really, really great panel. Um, all, so we had um, three, I don't know if you, did you just say that two, we had three of five mm -hmm. um, submit um, specific proposals. Um, and they were all, you know, they all had to do with light, like the, the respondents really responded to um, adding a light element to the tunnels, um, interactive elements. Um, so we sort of went through, you know, all three and, and um, talked about how feasible and how engaging they would be with the community. Um, and then the vote came down to the proposal um, from Ala Eptikar, um, which as you can see here, um, is to do a light installation, light and sound installation in the tunnels um, that would gradually over, over the course of a day um, add different uh, light elements to it. And then the sound elements, there'll be a, um, an, a Twitter app developed that will be able to, the community will be able to interact um, and control some elements of um, sounds that happen in the tunnel. Um, and then the Stanford um, students will also be involved in um, part of the installation and, uh, and concept um, evolution of this, of this project. Um, so yeah, we're very excited. It was really um, tough to choose because all three were really strong. Um, and they were all—they all could have been could have been great, but as a first as a first um, project, we thought this was the strongest. Yeah, um, and you know, just adding to that, I um, want to say that while we had three great proposals, it it was a unanimous vote uh -huh. for this one. So um, everyone actually had had this one as their number one choice, um, and. You know, a number of things getting to the community involvement in addition to Stanford students being involved in the project. Um, he is, has forged several partnerships, um, one of which is with a local Palito based company called Blurred Whisper. Um, they had worked with him on a project that's now featured on KQED Arts, uh, also to do with the Asian Art Museum, and they um, uh, will be bringing kind of the technology component of, of how. Uh, the programming for even the lighting, which will involve different kind of algorithmic um, um, programs so that the lighting actually changes also based on what the time of day and amount of traffic. Um, it could, it, they could program into it that on certain uh, days, special events, it's big game day that the tunnels will be the sort of a glowing red. Um, he did specifically say that both with the lighting and the sound, that it, the concept is to kind of have it, have it wave over you. It's not going to be flashing or super in, you know, bright in your face. Same with the sound, that it would be kind of waves of sound, not that you would stand there like you're in the mall and hear you know, hear a whole song, a jukebox, but he said it won't be like a jukebox. Um, 
So he, ha he was clearly, when we talked with him on the phone, uh, very enthusiastic about this, had already um, contacted and forged a number of partnerships locally, which we really liked. He was the one local artist mm -hmm. of the group um, and, and then had these other connections going on. Part of his um, proposal also involved doing um, community talk and some art walks through the tunnels to talk about the art with people. Um, and do you have some other things to add that came out? I just wanted to say on, on, on Allah's behalf, I feel like inevitably you can kind of, when you're selecting an artist, you kind of get somebody whose concept is great or somebody who's local or somebody who's really met the brief or the budget. I feel like in Allah, we're really lucky as a city because not only have we gotten a local guy, but we've gotten an immensely talented artist who I'm really excited to have among our, our our pantheon of greatness, you know? And so um, he's really up and coming. And again, like I said, a, a really talented person. And I, it, it's just exciting when you can see a proposal like that and it gets selected. And, you know, we have something really exciting to look forward to in such a, a hugely focal space in the city. Yeah, I think that uh, summarizes well what we were feeling today and seeing. Um, do, do any of you have, at this point, questions? Well, actually, I was going to say, because this project does have a lot of sort of moving parts and components to it, some of which are, you know, need to be really worked out more strongly. Some are kind of, you know, no-brainer, like they'll fall into place. Um, but there are, you know, it's not just a straight light piece or it's not just a straight sound piece. So there are, um, a lot of elements. So, if you guys have any questions, yeah, I about have a couple of questions. But one, I, 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 I really love that it's a local artist. I think that's great. Um, um, now, where that first set of pictures that were up was had that had anything to do with the uh, with the with the design or the concept of what he's having? Yes. So, um, one part of his plan, which um, other artists had not factored in, was to include both the pedestrian walkways. That you know that have these arched the blue arches into the blue and the yellow, as well as the tunnels that actually go up to the Caltrain platforms mm -hmm. to have lighting there too. And there there are a lot of logistical details to work out that will need to unfold. But part of his plan is to have all of those tunnel spaces be activated. Um, the lighting that you see up here is what he would add. This does not exist now. Right now, there's lights down the middle of the yeah. hall. And so there was discussion today with the electrical city people about how this would be done. Um, they are not concerned at all about it. Likewise, you know, they can also run conduit for adding speakers. Um, this striped section we had asked him about and um, whether that was lights or what was that. And it's, it's just an idea right now. It won't, won't be what it is finally. But the concept was sections of it, um, they will likely paint subtly. Um, maybe he said, for example, in a, a dark gray, and then the other might be a lighter, glossy gray, so that the light then interacts with that portion of it differently. Um, and the lights are LED lights, which um, he made a point of pointing out that the city is really encouraging um, everyone to move to that standard, and you know the fact that that is a big part of the. Light yeah, just for power efficiency. Yeah, right. So for the project, yeah. we'll actually be shutting off the existing fluorescent lights, and instead, um, they'll set up this new circuit for the LEDs. Now at actually, night, is there going to be a problem with the traffic that's going through there? Is it going to be real distracting? Uh, no. For traffic. Okay. It will be subtle and not <clears throat> blinking or flashing. You, as you're driving through, you would get a glow. You'd see through maybe you know one color on one side and another, and the next time you drive through, it could be have changed. Okay. So you would notice it, but it wouldn't. Now is he going to come back with schematic? Right, so somewhere down the line here to before to today was the vote yeah. for him concept. and just in the concept, and now it will go through actually now fleshing out schematics. Will it come to this commission to to uh, to look at and and approve at least to d describe the process? So, I think what we'll end up doing, um, particularly because this one has so many technical challenges, is, is we will break the contract up into phases, so he'll need to go through you know, schematics and, and sourcing his materials and prototyping and all of that. And so that will definitely come back as well. Uh, is there going to be a chance for public input as well in this project? 
Um, we're working with him on that. I mean, he seemed very open to, you know, being open and talking to the public and having, you know, having that kind of interaction. Um, as uh, Larissa mentioned, it's very early. So right now we've approved the concept and then we'll move forward with the plan. He also, you know, saw ways that people would interact with it as, as it goes with regards to the musical component and um, that they could, there would be ways for them to submit, people to submit um, requests for the, the sound, which could be anything from, you know, and he was aware of even things around um, copyright issues of like what could be played, because this is not a private collection, but yet it's, Right. There are questions around that. So then he even brought up the idea, well, it could be sound that is generated by Stanford musicians or Palo Alto bands or, you know, that it, there are a variety of ways that that sound could emanate and reflect the community. Did he address safety? Would the lights change with cutting off the other lights and then just using those lights particularly at night? Well, the cutting off of the other lights would be done, handled by the city electrician, um, and it wouldn't be the lights for the, where the cars are, but the lights in these tunnels, in the pedestrian, in the pedestrian yeah. walkway. Yeah. What we did talk I to, think, what, I think what, there's, sta there's standards. That's what we talked right? about. There's, yeah, a, there's a lighting about standard. There's a minimum and a maximum required to, to adhere to guidelines, so it would be within. Okay the approved amount so that there, it wouldn't, they, there was some discussion about that today. We said, well, mm -hmm. we don't want it to be too mood lighting-ish, you know, that it needs to be well lit. It's going to be problematic. Right. right. It's too bright. It's going to be problematic. Right. So, so the, we will have to shoot for that, that range. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> so if we don't have further questions, um, we are bringing this forth for action tonight, and I would <laughs> Um, like to move that as a as a group that we support the nomination today of the panel um, in selecting Ala Abtakar and his team um, to do the temporary art installation at University Avenue. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have a unanimous vote. And just to remind everyone where we stand from a budget perspective with this project. Um, uh, thus far, we have raised 30000 of the projected $65,000 budget project. We had pledged a 15000 to match to Stanford's um, contribution of fifteen. So that's where it currently stands, and they'll now, now that there is a, um, a project that's been selected, um, new discussions will begin about um, seeking the additional funding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Great. Moving on to our non-action items tonight. Um, it doesn't have to be a tunnel. But that's, yeah, that's true. That's right. Yeah. Um, we have an update on public art in private development. So I gave you some of the highlights during the um, during the comments, but uh, I will say that we're starting to have our our first meetings with architects, and um, and so far everybody's enthusiastic and on board and they've seen this before and so it, it seems to be um, so far so good uh, we are working furiously to try and you know get all the documents together to support the Commission in this process to support the planners and answer their questions putting together FAQ sheets both for developers for planners and for the commissioners so um, we are hoping I sent out an email earlier today hoping to try and put together a, a brief special meeting next Friday. So if you'll please respond with your availability for that, uh, that would be great. Uh, we do have one project for private development that looks like it may come before the commission in February. And so um, staff really feels like it's important that we have a chance to sit down and go through um, you know, a discussion where we can ask all the right questions and so that uh, staff and the commission is prepared for that meeting. So if you would please get back to Nadia and I on that, that would be fantastic. Um, and that's about all we have to add. It's, it's launched, it's here, it's moving. So <laughs> now we're, we're madly trying to stay ahead of the, the tsunami of work, but we'll get there. And if people haven't yet had a chance to review the, it's got loud also, materials online that um, Elise sent us links to, 
uh, it's important that we read those materials before meeting to discuss it so that we all have that background and we're not getting up to speed at the meeting. Any other questions on that item? Anyone? Yep. Oh, wow. It's getting our next update. Great. Uh, number four, water control quality, water control, water, excuse me, water quality control plan and household hazardous waste facility update. It's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Martin Webb has been hard at work on the series of totems um, for the facility. These are some of the other pieces he's done with the carvings. I don't know if we have the actual ones here of his, uh, with his birds. But he's about, so this was the concept drawing, and um, in fabrication, he ended up getting holes that are a little bit taller and a little bit thinner than these, but because of the landscaping at the site, they will stand out a little bit better. And so he's about 80% of the way through fabrication. Was that one of ours, the one that, that was no, a, those are from the original? No, those are older ones. The, the new ones are going to look very similar to that. <coughs> so we don't have sense. Okay. Um, so I'll bring the images of ours the next time. Uh, but he is uh, he's getting near to completion on those, and they're scheduled for installation in about April. So we're looking at, I think, March getting the footings in, um, and either installation of the actual pieces in late March or early April. Great. Uh, I have a question I realize related to this. I remember in our original discussion, I think it was because he, um, we were, we couldn't decide between his work that was going to be on the tank and this, and there was this one, and there was some discussion as to whether the plant was interested also in pursuing artwork inside. Do you know if, if they did or anything about that? They haven't pursued it at this point. Um, I think also they have their hands full. Trying to dust off that that part of the project, but if you recall the trellis work and everything that they were going to have around that seating area, really limited the space the space for an artwork to go in there. And so I think ultimately were maybe, that's why we determined it made more sense to have it out in front of both facilities. Right. Um, as far as I know, they haven't actually pursued something further on that water tank, but. There's space there, and they could always. I think that was what they were thinking too. Later. Is once everything was was completed and filled in, that they could always go back. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, any other questions on that one? No. Okay. Um, item number five: the municipal golf course. So um, the update on this project is following. We are moving along um, with the uh, open call. So right now we are pre-selecting um, qualifications uh, from artists interested in uh, submitting their qualifications. Um, so right now we have a lot of interest. We have a lot of calls and emails every day. Um, you know, the questions to provide more details. Uh, right now um, we have. Um, 11 uh, submissions already. The call will be closed on February 2nd. Um, again, right now we are looking into um, so putting together a selection panel. So we're considering different um, artists um, with interest, special interest in environmental uh, issues. Um, just looking locally and uh, looking into our uh, uh, residents who would be also interested in um, uh, volunteering on this panel. So it's got coming along pretty fast. Good. I just wanted to comment that I, uh, when I got this notice, I thought it was from you guys. It was from my public art network from College of Art Association. And you were doing this call and I said, 
hmm, this looks strange. Then I realized that you put it out publicly. So that's great. That's great. It's all out. <laughs> you saw that in another place first. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the, country, uh, so the goal good. was endorsed and supported through uh, a network mm -hmm. of um, different platforms. So we're out there. Yeah, that's great. we are. That's good. It's good to see. And are there yet, as of yet, commissioners? I can't remember because this project started a long time ago. Whether we were there commissioners who were already ex had expressed we interest in it, or if there uh -huh. were commissioners who were interested in um, in possibly participating in that selection panel this evening. Yes. What's the What's the budget for the for this? Twenty five. Uh, just under twenty five thousand. Great. Any other questions on this project? Thank you, Nadia, for the update. Okay, um, moving on to number six, the City Hall artwork update. So the exciting news I have about that is that that call is finally off the ground and launched and out there as well. So it, um, both of these calls are available on CAFE, which we started utilizing this year. Um, just is much more efficient use of staff time and makes it much easier to facilitate. So uh, the call is out there. We're also getting lots of inquiries and, um, and people who are nibbling. That call is open until February 10th. And so it's been our experience that the majority of the applicants wait until the last couple of days to, uh, to finally jump in. And so we're really excited to see how that um, how that pans out and what kind of excellent pool of people we have to work with. Mm -hmm. What did you say is the close date of that call? February 10th. And likewise, that one uh, has also been getting the same kind of distribution? Both yes, they're, they're both distributed um, through CAFE and we always put it out on the Public Art Network, which once you put it out on that, a bunch of other listing groups tend to put it up and, and just keep retweeting it. So, what is Cafe? Cafe is run website. by. Is Cafe a subset of another agency? It, it's or? run by Westaf. Okay. Um, call for entry is uh -huh. what um, is what it's really called. Mm -hmm. Everyone just calls it Cafe. But, okay. <laughs> um, it's a free and easy way for artists to be able to respond to calls. Uh -huh. um, the you know it's not just public art oriented. Curators use it for for various purposes for museums or gallery shows or whatever um, but it is free and easy for mm -hmm. artists once they've entry. got their images in there it makes it very simple for them to create mm -hmm. an application and then from the staff side it's much easier to track when things came in you have everything digitally you can do some online during mm -hmm. when you're doing your pre-panel to, mm -hmm. to sort of whittle the list down um, there's there's a lot of advantages there Great. Um, I guess if we're wrapping on number six, that moves on to number seven. Mm -hmm. Just barreling through this agenda tonight. <laughs> well, you want to stretch out your time, right? You're so like, what else are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> My final minute. <laughs> let's see. And especially since I'm on for this one, let's see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're all here. Uh, goodness. Okay, subcommittees. Um, and actually, um, both of, uh, Amanda and I um, have worked on this, and, and so I'm going to let Amanda start us off. She has really um, spearheaded this work, um, even from when we were first meeting to talk about the need for, for doing this. Um, it really had started with, with her. I mean, in, in you know, sharing the, the praise that's been spread around tonight, I really would like to acknowledge that, you know, Amanda saw a need when, when coming on as vice chair for us to really formalize process and procedure and to think about, you know, how can, how can our roles as commissioners, how can we make sure that they're valuable to the city and that we're not spinning wheels and doing things and thinking about things that really aren't going to be useful? Um, and this is really the, the fruition of that. 
So uh, I'm just seeing that this says 20 minutes. I, I could not speak about this for a further 20 minutes because we've been talking about this document now for months. And um, this was something I think that we talked about at last, uh, right before Thanksgiving. So anyway, it's gone through some revisions and changes. And uh, I just can't uh, express to you strongly enough that it's meant to be work in, pro work in process. I mean, we've gotten it to, you know, as, as organized as we can, but you know, it, it really has to be a live blueprint for working and, and how to save time and how to ramp up new commissioners faster and how to be able to inform yourself by, you know, by informing yourself without having to make phone calls and setting up things and, you know, basically, basically uh, using your time in the, in the best way possible. So uh, I think that it was sent to everybody. And just you know, keep us posted. Try, try to use it. And if, if it doesn't work, let's hear about that also. Um, yeah, that's all. And the idea is um, that each meeting, that um, a member of each subcommittee give an update to the group. Um, and by us you know, being able to have a standard format for it, we all you know, are getting updated on the same information. And so we don't have to ask or make phone calls because we can kind of have a reference of what's going on. So um, I know this document didn't get out to the group until quite recently. Um, some of us have sub uh, on these subcommittees, because we set the subcommittees several months ago, have been starting to meet. And so I did want to open it up for subcommittees having updates tonight. Um, and I'll, I'll start with the governance one, since um, the three of us met, and also because the governance subcommittee uh, will now change. Um, I, I think it also makes sense, since these subcommittees are required to change at least once a year, that January, upon election of new chair, vice chair, would make sense as the time to change subcommittees. So I thought tonight also we can um, look at, at that, and if people are wanting to um, to join or move or drop off what they have, this would be a good time of doing that as well. Um, for the governance subcommittee, um, what it, I don't have the list here to share, but what we did is we sat down and we prioritized um, very specifically, um, in addition to looking kind of at general operations, what what documents would be the most useful to be able to arm commissioners to be advocates of our art. Um, so, you know, ranging from um, having that, you know, concise PowerPoint presentation, um, we've had a few variations of it float around, you know, Elise and I have both given presentations with a for version of it. Patricia, you guys might remember had, had a version, but we'd like there to be kind of one version that can be worked from and, and placed in probably what will be a Dropbox so that all commissioners would have access to using it when they when they want to and need to. That just gives quick highlights of the collection, um, kind of mission statement of um, the Public Art Program and the Public Art Commission. Well, that was really a key one. Mm -hmm. um, so if you um, if you encountered an artist that wanted to figure out how to submit work or how to be involved with our program, you could immediately direct them to you know what information would be required to submit and what those those documents and details and, and qualifications needed to be. It was just sort of imagining certain scenarios that mm -hmm. seem to recur mm -hmm. and then making sure that like you, you have the wherewithal to, you know, answer the question in an informed way. I mean, not to like, you know, this is all, oh, Im implicit in all of this is that this is true, truly collaboration with staff, not, you know, trying to like go one man show it so you know just just to to be able to point it in the right direction and work a little bit more cohesively with staff another uh, item on there which will become very relevant um, as a number of us have, will have terms come up in the spring is um, new commissioner FAQ and kind of you know they get their big green binder but you know we all know coming on board when we're new what are some of the, all of us have a I mean, at least knows because she gets all the phone calls you know have a lot of the same kinds of questions or what do they need to know and so that was another one of the items on there um, and so um, those that kind of the list of the key toolbox documents um, 
um, and continuing to recommend recommend standards for commission ordinances and so forth which uh, lately I'd, I've been looking a lot through the ordinances of commissioner roles and responsibilities and to sort of see as we've been looking at this you know what is and is not really the, I mean a lot of what the Commission has done in the past has been because it's evolved that way not necessarily because it's what the city has asked of a commissioner um, and I think that this next year there'll be a chance to look at it anew now that there is is a art program established now that there's a new one percent some of that wording is pretty outdated and um, could use updating so with that um, I think I'll just leverage go into outreach which uh, Kathleen and I have we're the two right who have been on the outreach and I will just mention right off the bat on this outreach description that what you will not see on here, which when we had our brown bag lunch meetings about subcommittees was previously listed under outreach, is any kind of marketing activity. So while in times past um, some of us have been on the commission who have had marketing backgrounds and have seen the need for it and we haven't had a program in place in the same way um, really in taking off uh, you know a personal hat and looking at a commissioner's role and then something Ali mentioned you know long ago is that it's, it's not part of the defined role of, of a commissioner um, but from an outreach perspective thinking about advocacy and ambassadorship um, and how we partner and who we partner with um, and the outreach people on that subcommittee aren't the only ones who would be doing outreach they'd be coming up with a plan for outreach and then all of us as commissioners um, you know can raise our hands and say oh I'd like to be the liaison to the ARB or I would really like to you know to reach out to to Stanford Arts or to local you know places that that we've all feel like would be advantageous for Palo Alto Public Art to be in connection with which we've done uh, over time kind of spontaneously but we thought going forward it makes sense to have a plan around it you have more to add to that Kathy I guess I wanted to just say that as we have the percent for art and private development and are expecting um, additional funds for projects we think that the community input is really important and so one of the ways that we need to leverage the outreach is to get out to the community and get them involved and participate because as we I think commission a master plan for art would be really important to bring together maybe two times three times whatever the process may unfold as um, you know kind of design charrettes like what is the master plan for Palo Alto going to look like and the way that we all represent different communities whether it's neighborhood communities or Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts or you know whatever those communities might be um, just getting out there and kind of um, making known the fact that we want community input so I think that's really the nature of outreach as Larissa said maybe clarifying it more from a kind of reportorial <coughs> this is what the Art Commission is doing um, less about that more about the participatory mm -hmm. avenue Great. Um, does our uh, innovation subcommittee have any update tonight? Well, we do. And, um, <laughs> would you guys be able to put this into your computer? Here's the flash the drive. Yeah. Let's see. If, what, does it work if we turn this baby back on? Okay. Sorry. Should have told you that earlier. Yeah. So on this subcommittee are Commissioner Kavanaugh, Commissioner Toback. Do we have a third? No, nope, we have two right us, now. Okay. Yeah, and we really, I mean, I'm going to pass this over to Vicki actually because she's going to spearhead the presentation if it gets up. It's kind of, and, uh, and excuse us if, like, I don't know if this is necessarily like this might this is probably like 99 percent there maybe a hundred but i don't think we're expecting no. to it shows present where it it, yeah right but it shows where where we're going if there's if there's any overlapping images or anything like that um i think we're they have to, to yeah you have to put your nice little guy in there do you have a USB? yeah my thing went it's not going so oh, we i mean when we were there he is when we were thinking about, you know, what kind of goals or deliverables the innovation subcommittee could have, we 
you know, because innovation is such a sort of nebulous word <laughs> that, you know, what does it mean and how can it actually help and benefit on a monthly basis to, um, to the commission? So we came up, oh, oh, yeah. Oh. No, it's okay. Thanks. It allows us to dream, Vicky. It. Yeah. it allows <laughs> us to <laughs> dream. Imagine what might be that. It's like a luxury brand. <laughs> what what is, is, is it fine? Okay. okay. Uh oh. Am I doing that? No. no oh, I'm not. Like, <laughs> good. She's good. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, it's under control. Right. Good. So. Remain calm. <laughs> we're going to start out with an exercise where all of us are going <laughs> to do this. No. <laughs> um. So we came up. We came up with some. Um, oh, you can't advance there. She's advancing. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah. we came up. We came up. You could go to the next slide. We came up with some some goals, um, which was to bring new ideas to um, the Public Art Commission, um, and in turn have the um, the city. Um, sort of broaden examples of public art in our city. See, there's that little five that, like I said, it's not, not meant to be there. <laughs> um, and, and we thought, you know, maybe we could create on a monthly basis um, a report and break it up almost like an editorial calendar. Um, if you could go to the next slide. Um, so, we would, you know, we would partner with the, the staff and the community, um, and really go out there and see what kind of um, what kind of art people are, are really thinking about, really pushing the boundaries, mm -hmm. and just have bring them back here to make sure that we are thinking about those kinds of concepts as well. Um, like involving outreach in the whole innovation con ideas part of yeah, it. Yeah, just mm -hmm. to make sure that we're all aware of sort of new. Um, new kinds of work or new models of, you know, bringing that work to fruition or um, just so we are sort of, you know, in line with the industry standard of what's going on in, in public art at a national level. Um, so this is all just kind of verbiage about, you know, the, the specifics, the specifics of that, but the reporting plan is that every month will present, um, probably in PowerPoint form, um, one element of public art and really try to blow it out and give really good insight into that element mm -hmm. versus just saying like, mm -hmm. here's a whole bunch of images that are neat, mm -hmm. you know, to really, instead of just looking at a bunch of neat images and saying those are great, to maybe say let's look at art that addresses the environment how are these projects done and what were some of the um, stepping stones that they had to you know to get there and then what were some of the challenges and how does that apply to Palo Alto um, and additionally even to the extent that we can start to give um, cost ranges so that people understand sort of stakeholder involvement and costs associated with them mm -hmm. so that you don't just look at the picture of the bean and wonder, oh, was that free or mm -hmm. was that three <laughs> million dollars? Where did yeah, that right money come right, from? More than yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um Okay, so that clearly is <laughs> <laughs> an imagine <laughs> text. <laughs> this yeah, but it's, but it's performance art. Go bad. ahead and replace with your own text. Not like conceptual art. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> Just imagine there being text here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this could be for next month. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I, I think I just put some, you know, some type, you know, images with with types of art. Um, so next steps and resources, we'll create a monthly editorial calendar focusing on a specific area of public art each month. Um, and we'll create and maintain a shared Dropbox folder so we can go back and um, look at any notes or images from, from the meetings. Um, and that we will have sort of our ear, ear to the street with um, industry events and arts organizations or cultural partners um, doing innovative things. Um, and this is this is sort of the start of the calendar of types of art that we plan. Um, I didn't quite finish the August, September, October, November 
<laughs> if anybody has any. We're open to input. Yeah, we're yeah. open. We're open to. Uh, <laughs> I, I have one that, well, I have it in top of mind that I know has come up with council and I, is uh, that I think would be interesting is related to, to, to bike pass, passageways and yeah. art that's been yeah. done in for or in combination with and not so much bike racks that we had looked at in the past but more through ways and part that could be part of a city bike so I think plan. Could, like integrated streetscapes for April? that could yeah could be part of of right. that and um, I know one of our I think it might have even been our council liaison who at one point had suggested to us to potentially even connect with uh, talk uh, great partnerships with um, some of the groups that are working with the city. There are some active bicycling mm. groups that are working on those plans with them, and so maybe when we have some fun examples, that would be mm -hmm. that would be interesting to share, mm -hmm. to talk about what could be exciting, mm. or maybe even if you're really stretched for <clears throat> ideas, like in those kind of down months, mm -hmm. I'd be yeah. interested in. Um, in cities like just focusing on the art uh -huh. in those cities That's especially good, yeah. those that you wouldn't particularly think of public art that have really made inroads and mm -hmm. like you know like mm -hmm. i'm thinking pittsburgh yeah uh -huh. never been that to pittsburgh to but too. maybe pittsburgh mm -hmm. is known for public art again well and also because they kicked it off with this whole fabulous master art plan project which included mm -hmm. these little vans that would drive around to neighborhoods and i don't know sort of hot dog whatever they did that they, they just hop out of their vans and talk to people and you know, right, a job for me after I'm not on the commission. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with the hot dog truck <laughs> <and> driving around. <laughs> Transportation would be another area. Yeah, um, yeah. Like VTA is doing new bus stops and things like uh -huh. that. Bart, uh -huh. uh, and the new stations that are yes. going up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. And that was brought up, I think, at the council. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. just got uh, bridges and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And back to the Bart. cities, I was thinking um, even when I was at, at the holidays, I think um, in um, Yountville, mm -hmm. we had a public art walk. Mm -hmm. yeah. A yeah. tiny yeah. little town. I don't even yeah. think yeah. that they yeah. have. 2,000 people mm -hmm. in that community, wow. and yeah. they had a very public art walk. Mm -hmm. That was, <laughs> well, you know, yeah. yeah. So maybe like um, types of events mm -hmm. that types of come out of, right? Yeah, it could be even ways to do public art yeah. walks. Or like, yeah, yeah how, do, how do cities market their mm -hmm. collections? Or how do they take these projects and then Mm -hmm. Get them out well, there. you know, San Francisco also have that public art display, yeah. art walk thing. Mm -hmm. It's not even an art walk; it's out in the park. So they have all these things like all these artists to put together public art, and it's temporary. So it may be mm -hmm. on a temporary public. Mm -hmm. walk, but, yeah. yeah, and it's an annual event. It's a festival uh -huh. now. So you can have a map of your public art too, and that yeah. could be a, a self-guided uh, public art right. tour. So yeah, I mean the goal the goal with all this is to sort of go a level deeper mm -hmm. and really hash out, um, <clears throat> you know, take innovation to start with. But really, how did that inf innovation come to seem so seamless with a yeah. lot of these projects? Yeah. And I'm, I'm just thinking you were saying for your August, September, October, November, December. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so and as I'm thinking, my mind is just moving along. But I, I just recently saw one on the PNN that was interesting was the scientific arts, the technology mm. art, art that's been That would be good. So technology yeah. art. Because they yeah. had some very exciting projects there that was mm. just way out of this world. Yeah. Especially technology in our area. Technology plus art, yeah. Of course, can, yeah. You know, that would be a good one. So yeah, I mean, let you know Kathleen or I know if there's other other suggestions. Um, and also, um, people can feel free to speak up if they're interested in joining this group. There are two, and we have a maximum of three. Um, very fancy powerpoints. <laughs> that you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Did our logo change? Did the logo change? No, it's the just the PowerPoint. No, that it's the same. <laughs> Oh, it's it's because it, it in with the blue background. Yeah. It's the yeah. type of yeah. file yeah. that it is. Yeah. So you can you can go through. These were just um, <clears throat> examples of like types of projects. What was the Silicon Valley sign one? Yeah, I've never seen this sign. What was it? I is this an art project? Or? No. Oh, this oh, was oh. Just like oh, and tweezers. Th this is <laughs> no, <it's> tweezers. <laughs> this is just a, a mood slide. This is a mood. Board, but the bottom ones actually, I think, were meant to be the plates. <laughs> 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 like the maker's side. Like the arrow deck. Like the arrow deck. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was innovation. <laughs> oh, I like this project. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, well, I like that. That's great. Oh, yeah. So awesome. Mm. Another <laughs> 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 That's great. Hidden art. Oh, that's great. Mm. Mm. We have some hidden art too here in Palo Alto because every once in a while I pass them. A great example of that is the, the uh, San Jose State San Jose City Library, mm -hmm. uh, which Mel Chin did, and he's got three or four pieces in there that are just mm -hmm. they're just hidden. Oh, yeah. That would be a neat thing then to yeah. do. Yeah. Talk about a neat art There's tour. It's a journey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of a, we have some art that should be. <laughs> is he eating food art? Is that got? Is I, that, 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 that's, that's, that's a joke. Yeah, that's you a joke. Then, it's, it's a, joke. a participatory <laughs> <laughs> installation. Yeah. It changes over the course of the night. <laughs> Some of the food trucks, the way they're painted oh, and stuff is, is just. Uh, I'm hoping we get a conflict too. kitchen here in town. Yeah. That is amazing. Project. Amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that mm -hmm. so much. What's to come from the innovation? I'm not going to make you want to stay, but I tell you, this is looking very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Vicki. That's great. Allie, just popped to mind. I remember um, you had met a woman who is a historian for the city who's at Coverly, and she said she had all kinds of articles about Palo Alto art. But I bet she's still there. I think it would just be. I'd love that every month too. So History interesting lesson to know, you know, to see what she has in her files. She's part of the, the historical, historical society. society yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, back to our subcommittees. Thank you very much, Innovation Subcommittee. That was great. We we all got to be inspired and to laugh as well. Um, <laughs> Do we have any updates from any of our, well, our three ad hoc subcommittees, our University Avenue Tunnel group already did give their update today. Do either of the other two currently existing ad hoc groups, which are the Cal Ave Tunnel or the Anthony DeCenza group, have any updates? No, we haven't yet, meet, we haven't yet met for California Avenue Tunnel. Do, and I think there was a memo sent, right, mm -hmm. from, um, from Anthony DeCenza. Um, that just basically like outlining next steps. Um, I haven't had a chance to, to look at it oh, yet, okay. so I think we'll be we can report it when well, yeah, you have a report. Yeah. Okay, but there's been a chance to look at it. And, yeah. right, and there was money allocated. I saw in the budget. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit phase yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, so then um, that's it for updates on subcommittees. Uh, and the last thing on subcommittees is for um, who is on them. Um, I mean, really, since these are being newly formed now. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was weird. Nice. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. of Oh, so we're yeah. showing up in the dark. <laughs> we're having a dark meeting. Um, so we have our ad hoc groups really quite set in um, innovation, Vicki and Kathleen. For governance now, since it's the chair and the vice chair, mm -hmm. plus one additional commissioner, then it will be the two of you. Um, and an additional commissioner. So, um, it can be. It can be. To be three. Right. That's true. It needs to be a minimum of two mm -hmm. and can be three. Um, I will offer that if you guys would like to have a third, I would um, be happy to continue to sit on that subcommittee um, to provide continuity and what's been going on with it. But if you guys want to. Well, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I also think I will have to give up one of my other uh -huh. okay. subcommittee duties. So mm -hmm. what would that be for you? What are you thinking? Well, I'm 
thinking I probably should punt on um, outreach. Okay. Probably could use someone there. Okay, well, we and need to have at least one other yeah. then, because I'm then now the only one on outreach. Um, so what, how often do we look at the sub, like when's the next obvious new commissioners coming in, like this year? May. May? May. Right. Would they be placed in May? Maybe. We'll see, because the council just sort of changed the way they did it so okay. that all of the boards and commissions, those terms expire at the same time, and they'll do the calls at the same time. Okay. So your guess is as good as mine as far as how it'll work. It would be great to have them in in May, but yeah. it's the first time we've really gone through this process. I see. Well, I'd like to then propose that we look at, I mean, you're, you're mm. not going to get kicked off of a com subcommittee if you really want to stay off it, but I think that we should then plan to look at them in June. Because I think that people could take, mm. you know, I, I'm certainly interested to take something through. on, right, right mm -hmm. and, and maybe looking at terms and that kind of thing. But also, we want space on some of those mm -hmm. for new people to join should they want to. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Revisit, maybe we look at it in June. Groups. Good idea. January and June. Biannual. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, you know, if there's no one right now who's jumping to join Outreach, um, you can think about it and, you know, pop an email to Elise. I think really what would be ahead of us in these coming couple of months is formulating a, a plan for, you know, what are the advantageous partnerships to have for our commission and how do we want to go about pursuing those. Great. Okay. Um, and with that, um, we're on to four-year calendar. Our next meeting is February 20th, uh, back here in the council conference room. Um, any other announcements tonight? Just a reminder about uh, to please get back to us on the date for January 24th for next Friday. And I've had one commissioner let me know that that 11 to noon time is problematic. Is it easier to do it earlier in the morning or? For me, it's easier to do later, like over the lunch hour, like from 1230. 1230 to 130? Uh, I can do that. I, I don't, can we all try to? Find I can also. Are we talking about the twenty fourth right now? Yeah. Twenty fourth. Mm -hmm. Do twelve thirty to one thirty. Okay. If anyone gets home and realizes that there's a conflict, just please let us know. Um, so now you know. I'll start working on securing a room for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting all the materials ready. So thank Ad you. Additionally, for calendar, I know that um, Amanda and I, with, along with Ryan and Elise, were talking about wanting to schedule our annual retreat. Mm -hmm. um, does a Friday time work better for folks than a Saturday? If we were to, to pick a Friday and to generally? Yeah, we not a, Yes. So, so um, could you guys also initiate a calendaring for ideally? 8.30. February, where, where, like 8.30 to 12.30 kind of yeah, timing. Did we do that morning. before? We've done that before. Yeah. 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 Um, to get one on the calendar for February. Uh, we, we've we were talking, um, Amanda and I, along with Ryan Elise, kind of when it made sense to do it. Um, I think that even if, you know, as, as we're, you know, <coughs> even with the 1% conversation happening separately, there's, there's enough for us to do to meet, to, to, to revisit goals, and we had a no number of other things on there that would be good for us to, to join in on um, having our annual retreat. Um, and then finally, any updates on a, our joint meeting with council rescheduling? No, but now that the uh, the liaisons have all been assigned, I'll circle back. I knew it was going to be later in January before they would give us a date, so I'll check back in with the uh, with the clerk's office. And those are typically on a Monday night before the council meeting. It's usually when we've had those, I believe. I think that's right. Yeah, but okay. we'll see. Okay. <laughs> Karen, Karen Holman. Karen Holman. Okay. 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 So it's not good. You have a thing. That's great. Okay. Okay, I adjourn, I adjourn the meeting tonight. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.